Excellent, and welcome to TAD Summit Innovators Podcast. We are very lucky to have Peter, the uh, co-founder and CTO for uh, Private AI. So without further ado, I'm gobbling my words there. Peter, please introduce yourself and what Private AI is getting up to. Yeah, thanks, Alan. Uh, thanks very much for having me on today. Uh, very excited about it. Uh, yes, my name is Peter. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Private AI. We're a Canadian company based up in Toronto, where interestingly, there's no snow on the ground at the moment, but uh, that's another matter. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, we build privacy technology. Uh, we're focused around text and data anonymization. And really, the, the core use case for us at the moment is redacting, identifying and removing uh, PI from training data and data that's going into and out of machine learning and AI applications such as LLMs. PI, private information, right? Yeah, PI okay. is personally identifiable information. Per personally identifiable. So like your name, yeah. your surname. Um, yeah. It could also be, and it's not just text, because I mean, you cover like PDFs. Um, exactly. But images, yeah. so it could be your face. Um, audio, so your uh, voice is uh, PII. Because exactly. Could, yeah. You know, and then I, I did. I noticed on your website you didn't mention video. Is that in the pipeline? Uh, it's something we're not working on that heavily at the moment. Really, the uh, where the market is at right now is text, especially with yeah. LLM applications such as exactly. ChatGPT. Gotcha. And uh, for us, yeah, the the call center is is our beachhead market. So uh, we're also the leading provider to the to the ASR space. Gotcha. So there's a number of, uh, of ASR companies that uh, that um, use our system to provide reduction. Oh, excellent. So that's the automatic speech, re speech recognition. So as they're churning out the text, then it's like a switch you can put on to uh, yeah. remove. Okay, excellent. That's good to know. So, I mean, coming back to the beginning, why did you found it? Because, you know, I mean, it's been running out for five years, is it? So, yeah. uh, you know, it's, that was quite smart to be worrying about privacy back five years ago. Yeah, I I guess it was, although definitely um, a little bit early would have been even better. But yeah, I <laughs> I guess that's that's true for anything or for many things. Uh, my, my background is in machine learning. Mm -hmm. I uh, developed some of the first neural networks to go into the Mercedes-Benz cars. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like back then, this is pre-GDPR. You could do whatever you want wanted with data, right? Like there was no GDPR. There were no rules. There were best practices. Yeah. But uh, you can't operate that way today. And like now privacy is a big thing. People care about it. And also some of the things that have happened uh, have really highlighted the, the need for it. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, like when building machine learning applications, data is the is the new oil. Uh, yep. The more data, the better it is. The better the model you will get yep. is. Yeah, that's the one of the core truths of machine or tenets of machine learning, I would say. But yeah, the problem is that like getting hold of this data, especially in enterprise applications, in finance, uh, insurance, healthcare, pharma, that kind of stuff. It's it's very, very difficult. It's highly sensitive and you can't just put this into machine learning models. Exactly. So that's really where the, the genesis for this company came from is to make it easier for people to uh, use machine learning without whilst mitigating the the privacy concerns. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I think So you sit in you sit in the middle. Exactly. Basically. Scrubbing. Exactly. Yeah. So so exactly. so you're you're out there scrubbing this thing to allow yeah. Uh, these enterprises and what have you. And obviously there are rogue actors that aren't using companies like yourself in the middle, correct? That I think that's yeah, the terrifying in fact, part. Uh, I would say that's most of the market right now. But uh, So most of the market is rogue. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, like look at OpenAI, for example, right? Like they were, they got banned in Italy um, for a period of time. And I mean, that that's since blown over for the most part, but uh the Italian uh, privacy authority, um, sorry, I forget their name, has uh, put OpenAI back in the crosshairs. Yep. And for good reason. Uh, like the prob like nowhere is this this more um, important than LLMs because something that's that's not really called out is that these are really memorization machines. They're yeah. very very good at memorizing any and all training data they've seen. So especially for enterprises which are now building enterprise LLM applications where they might be training these models on that data, 
anything you put in can spit out at uh, privacy, sorry, at, at inference time. And this has happened and, and been in the news for a number of years now, like also before ChatGPT. There was this Korean uh, company, it was a dating platform, and they built a chatbot and they trained on about 10 billion uh, customer chat logs. And these were very intimate conversations, right? And uh, yeah, like they put it into production and all of a sudden without any hacking, any like any like kind of malicious activity, this chatbot just started spitting out really sensitive information about people, like where they lived, um, like like really kind of intimate stuff that they they wow. wouldn't want um, getting out in the public domain. And it's important to highlight this was not a hack or a research project showing that oh you could do this. No, that this just started happening. Like yeah. so, AI like, basically took it. It took it upon itself to go and do this. Uh, I wouldn't say it took it upon itself, but rather the best answer that it, the best answers, okay. the answers that it chose to give, sorry, chose to give uh, included this information. Exactly. Mm. And also malformed prompts can knock it into a mode where it's then pumping out personal identifiable information. Yeah, so that's the thing that. that, so let alone if you, yeah, if you actually start uh doing things like that then it's it's very very easy to get the training data out yeah. and there's a whole body of research as well this like there's a a lot of research papers out there showing different techniques so you can do this it sounds like the beginning like what our rcs and google wants they want to control and have all that information i'm sure they've studied that because that's what they're yeah. looking to do oh, yeah. take over i mean rcs oh rcs yeah okay you don't have no idea what they're doing there <laughs> uh and exactly. what they want to do with that and apple um, and that's exactly the problem with some of these large LLM companies. Like it used to all be open source. The training data never really was, but at least the models were, whereas now it's all closed source. So we yeah. have very little idea and information on what's happening. And yeah, OpenAI was definitely deficient in their privacy controls. So things yeah. like request for deletion. Uh, and yeah, that that's the whole thing with ChatGPT, right? It's free because they're getting a whole bunch of data that they can train their models on, right? Exactly. So it's. I think there's parallels to uh, to certain social media companies where, yeah, it's a free service, but you're paying in a different way. Exactly. You're pre paying in data. So just to understand your business a little bit better. So you sell now. Is it an on-prem or a cloud-based uh, offer to direct to enterprises? Yeah. Exactly. So. Uh, I guess the thing that makes us different is that we we operate in a number of different languages. We do over 50 now, but wow. also our system is designed to be de like self-hosted. So it's distributed as a Docker container. So you can gotcha. run it in a Windows data center on 10-year-old machines. You can run it in AWS. You can run it in Azure. You can even run it on your, on your laptop for, I mean, for testing and stuff like that if yeah. you want. Gotcha. We're about to launch a cloud offering as well, but primarily... Uh, it's about self-hosted and yeah. yeah, like we're a privacy company. Like it, it wouldn't really make sense for us to go. Yeah. Like make your data more sensitive by sending it out over the internet to us as a startup. And then we'll <laughs> give it back to you. Like that, exactly. that wouldn't yeah. make sense. No, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So I have a couple of questions. If go you don't it, mind, Jeremy. Alan, is it no, all go right? For it. Yeah. Number one, did Mercedes actually give you a car at least? I got That's to fun. go on a test drive one once, but um. So they didn't give you a car for everything you did for them. Germans, Germans, don't get me started. Yeah, it's um, not the American market, but I did get to drive in one once. But I think that the main benefit was just being able to. Well, I'm I'm not a car person. I really don't care. I have to yeah, say. Yeah, me neither. I it was uh, the main benefit was being able to rub it in my brother's face because it was always his dream to work for a German <laughs> car company, and well, I, I got to live his dream. Oh. Is that where where are you from originally? Australia. I'm, uh, from, Australia. I'm from the outback. Okay. okay, wow. Crocodile Dundee. Exactly. Love, love Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> I was um, uh watching some of his videos recently and I I I definitely wouldn't recommend doing any even half the stuff he did with crocodiles. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, no. Absolutely. Um and, and number two, really you should pay attention to uh Robert Viz and Bird and see what they're doing on the enterprise. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely some synergies. I mean, he's taking the industry kind of by storm right now by dropping SMS costs across the board. 
to Enterprise and kind of being a champion against Bam, I, I would recommend that. And, and number two, what are your thoughts as far as we, we just went through a project on um, identity? What are your thoughts of if there were a product where people owned and controlled their own identity? Is that something that you see as would be a positive or something that's realistic in your mind with all the data and privacy issues? Would that make it harder for, for what you're trying to do or easier or or what? I mean, I'm, I'm, I I kind of like a loaded question there. Yeah, that's a great one. A great question. Uh, like, definitely it would be a good development. Like, there would, uh, in my mind, there's no denying that. The, yeah, I just got to say, though, the, if that's realistic or not, like, I, I don't know, because it's it's so fundamental to so much of the, 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 well, not even just the tech industry, also like finance, banking, like it's it's so critical there. But look, we'll we'll see what happens, right? Like there's AI legislation coming out, there's a GDPR, which already exists. So the field has changed a lot in the last five years, like what the next five or 10 years would bring. Like that would, that would be a very nice development if it did happen. Well, this will just be people. This would be a movement of the public. Large amounts of people saying, you know what? It's my number, my I get my data. You want to sell it? Pay me. Or yeah. I want I want who I want to call me or not call me. I want to be able to decide. I don't want uh, a thousand uh, you know spam calls from a politician I don't care about. I don't want people calling me up. I, you know, it's about people controlling their own privacy, controlling their own footprint, and owning their own identity. So that's yeah. a really amazing podcast number twenty nine with Noah Rafalco. I'd love to get him with you, boy. You guys would kind of just be bouncing off the walls. So. I, yeah, again, I, I think if for you, two things I would, Alan, let's do an intro to him and, and yep. Robert yep. in the bird, Robert Viz, because he's the hottest thing going. But Noah Rafalco no and PNID is really, because yep. we, we want to find a solution. We're tired of scamming grandma. We're tired of the billions. And we know what AI is going to do uh, this coming year to people. And you've already got, you know, people getting spoofed by their husband's with AI and it's just wrong and it's just wrong. And the mobile operators in our country are just making billions of dollars off of um, spam and, and robocalls and filtering, which doesn't work. So this is a really important podcast for us. And we really want to stay close and, and see how we can take advantage of, of introducing you to, to some of these brilliant innovators that we've had and, and kind of get you out there more. Because you know, kind of offline, you taught us about told us about some of these data breaches and what went on in, in Korea. I think it's amazing, Alan. Great call. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. no, it's. Uh, I mean, we've discussed some of your verticals. So you know, healthcare, finance. <clears throat> uh, one of the things you know, and you mentioned it in the process, which is identifying the PII. Now, there's obvious stuff like sort of name, but what are some of the unobvious PII that you've identified? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, a lot of the privacy legislation today is based off the GDPR. That, yeah. That's kind of like the uh, the genesis of it all. Yeah. And it's, it's very broad. Like uh, usually um, what comes to people's minds is names, email addresses, credit card numbers. So things yeah. which directly identify someone. So that would yeah. be called direct identifiers. But yeah. Uh, any what we call a quasi identifier. So yeah. if they're male, female, uh, like which city they might live in, mm -hmm. what sports team they might like, what oh. religion they might follow, all of that is actually considered PI under legislation. Gotcha. Yeah. Because that really and, does help vector in to an yeah. individual. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And there's also a large body of research as well uh, devoted to uh, like when someone says they've anonymize the data set then uh going and figuring someone out and um uh, yeah there was even a uh u.s politician um whose medical record was uh was found in in one of these pieces of research oh that's right so, yes uh, yeah they, i remember that yeah 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 because it uh, it's sort of it, it it's come back again because i can remember like about a decade ago during this sort of big data hype phase that oh we've de-identified all this data 
And then people would go in, troll through, and basically say, this is this person, this person, you know, just like using location. You know, exactly. it's a good example, because that location will, in the evening, most probably show, or overnight, will show where they live. And depending yeah. on the accuracy and other points, so you can see where they work, you know, basically where they live, you know, what the commute is, you know, and there's a whole host of mm -hmm. stuff that enables you to triangulate down to an individual. So it is, it's, yeah. it's that quasi identifiers, I think is yeah. there's a lot of work required. Yeah. But even for things like credit card numbers, like sure, on the face of it, a credit card number, that's easy to write a regular expression for four groups, yeah. four numbers, but they're not always 16 digits. Like in Correct. Japan, for example, they've got a bunch of different formats. And and even then, especially in like telephony and call center applications, when it's gone through an ASR system and it's broken up over multiple turns and yes. people are repeating the digits back, like that that kind of stuff is is actually quite hard to do. Interesting. And with, yeah, I, I like to liken the problem a lot to um, all the self-driving cars. So many companies, including mine, uh, and a few years ago, all, all showed a little demo of a car driving up and down the street. I'm like, yep, in a year or two, it's going to be ready. And lo and behold, like there were dozens of those companies, and there's really two, maybe yep. just one, that are seriously left in the race now. Yeah, And even sure. then, it's like, getting it to work to that 100% level of accuracy is very difficult because something like a credit card number, you absolutely don't want the, even one of those being found. So exactly. getting to those super high levels of like, like far higher than human levels of accuracy, that's, yeah. that's really where the challenge is. Gotcha. Gotcha. So where do you see your business going in the future? Is it just mining the enterprise segment across not just the, you know, the hot topics, healthcare, finance but across all businesses because they are impacted by gdpr yeah definitely uh yeah we've we're, we've got a especially since chat gpt launched uh, mm -hmm. we we've built an integration for that now where it doesn't just remove the pi but also puts it back into the response so it's kind of like it looks the same and behaves the same from a user perspective but it means that no pi is going to open exactly AI. so you put in fake names fake numbers and stuff like that yeah exactly yeah but uh, yeah, like that's gotten us a huge amount of interest in the finance, uh, like insurance and healthcare. So there's yeah. a number of uh, like big financial institutions in Europe and North America uh, that we're we're working with now. Cool. But yeah, like I, I think just really building out our system, building out our capabilities, launching more unique features directly aimed at the, the machine learning space. Gotcha. That's uh, that's really what we're focused on. And you take care and look forward to speaking to you soon. Will do. Thank you. Thanks for having me on.